This is a tutorial for integrating polls into your Zoom meetings. First, you'll need to make sure that you have a Zoom Pro account. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to see the polling function. Once you're a Zoom Pro, then you're going to navigate to zoom.us slash account slash setting. And inside of here, you are going to scroll down into the in meeting basic option and make sure that polling is toggled. Okay. And it will be, if it's activated in blue, then you know you're ready to go. After you've toggled that poll option, then you're going to go ahead and schedule a meeting. It's important to know that you can't activate uh, a poll unless you have a meeting scheduled. One important thing to note is that you will need to require registration if you are interested in getting reporting data after the meeting is over to see individual responses to your poll. So we're going to make sure we click that here and then you can you know, fill around with all the other little settings. We're going to go ahead and save. Okay. So now that we have that, then we're going to jump over here into poll and then we're going to go ahead and begin to create our poll. It's important to know that you can launch multiple polls during a Zoom meeting. Each poll can have multiple questions. And um, let's just say, though, that you want to ask three questions in a meeting, but at different times. In order to do this, you're going to need to create three polls with just one question. So let's go ahead and do that. Anonymous is, um, is a nice little feature so that in case you wanted to just collect anonymous data, um, and protect privacy of your respondents, you can do that. Otherwise, you can just leave it unchecked. Um, we're gonna add this question here. So, who's your favorite color? You can see that um, the question and then the two different answers are, at minimum are required in order to add a question to a poll. The difference between a single choice and a multiple choice is that with single choice, you can your participants can only choose one option, but with multiple choice, um, it's more like a checkbox where the participant can select or choose multiple options. In this case, we're just gonna try the single choice. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and save that. So that'll be our first question, which we'll ask, I don't know, like the first you know minute that we have our virtual meeting started. And then in, at the five minute mark, we might wanna ask them another question. Just to demonstrate, I'm gonna click this one as anonymous. Since it's a question about the shirt size, this is also a single choice question. I'll just put small, medium, large, extra large. And just for good measure, why don't we go ahead and show what it looks like if you have a multiple choice answer. Burritos. Yes. Okay. Great. Now that your um, now that your meeting is all set up, then we can go ahead and start this meeting. I'm gonna ask Glenna, one of our virtual event assistants and customer experience lead, to join me in this meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and invite Glenna here. Okay. Great. While we're waiting for Glenna to join, you'll see that I have um, the polling feature um, available here. That's because I selected that in my account settings. And once, hi Glenna, thanks for joining. Um, <laughs> once you um, once you're here, then we can uh, select different types of polls. And you can see that this one has more of a checkbox option. And it won't show, unfortunately, to the um, audience whether or not it is anonymous or it is um, it is something that you're recording their, their options, but it's pretty good. Um, if you want to edit 
Um, only the host is an important note can edit or add a new question um, to the poll. A co-host can't do it and certainly an attendee cannot do that. So, but going back, um, Glenn, I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll and hopefully this works and you can go ahead and make a selection. Something that we've noticed lately is that Zoom can be a little bit buggy and not be um, calculating the poll responses quickly in real time. So what we might suggest is that like just have maybe two to five minutes or however long of a duration that you want to have a poll live and feel comfortable and confident knowing that even if you might not see a response, you probably may have gotten some results. Um, and if not, you can always relaunch. So I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. And yep, um, we can see that Glenna's favorite color is yellow. Mine too, Glenna. Thanks so much, Glenna. I think we've demonstrated everything that we need to today. I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting and move on to reporting. Okay. Oh, I have a feature that allows me to save the meeting chats, which is really handy. Okay, so now that we have that, you're going to go to zoom.us slash account slash report, and inside here, you're going to select meeting. From meeting, um, you are going to press poll report. Make sure you hit that button search, otherwise you'll be in this constant frustrating loop of just seeing registration reports. So it's a little um, tick of the system. And then once there, you can click generate. And in the report queue, you'll see that you are able to have your poll reports generated. And you'll see a username, user email, what time um, that poll was selected, and also the questions and the responses. Remember that anonymous? You'll see that um, it will collect only anonymous information and in email. So if you got this far and you're feeling like a master, then wow, you're awesome. Come work with us at Happily as a freelance virtual event specialist. And if you got this far and you have a massive headache, never fear, you can sign up for Happily's enterprise plan and our virtual assistants will take care of all of this for you. Just go to happily.io slash virtual to learn more. And if you only remember three things from this tutorial, remember this. You create and edit polls in the schedule a meeting section. Make sure to click that required registration to enable individual reports. And the last thing um, that's a little bit tricky is that only a host can edit a meeting, but co-hosts can certainly help you with launching a meeting. So that's it. We wish you all of the best in your Zoom polling journeys and adventures. We hope this really helped you. Have a nice day. Thank you.